morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mike Messerly. I'm from Smyrna High School in Rutherford County. I'm going to try to uh, be the moderator here. Uh, I don't think I've ever moderated anything but an argument between my kids. So <laughs> uh, I'm just going to introduce the speakers. Uh, the first one is Tiffany Phillips. She serves as the work-based learning facilitator within the Career and Technical Education Department at Rutherford County School. And I'm going to kind of let her take it from there. I will tell you that she's been employed in the county since 2005. And she's going to tell you about her tenure and all the things she's done because that could change since then. So, Tiffany Phillips. Did you say it could change? What could change since you think it could change? I thought you were saying that. There's a lot of things that you guys could do. I thought you were saying that it, it could change in the future. Gotcha. So yes, thanks, Mike. Um, I actually work closely. Yes, please. I actually work closely with Mike. Um, he's one of our career coaches in our at Smart High School, so we love him. Um, and is doing an awesome job with working employers. So I'll just put in a plug for him real quick, since he didn't take the opportunity. Um, if you guys would like to get into some schools then uh, you can contact me or Mike and he will definitely get you there. He's doing an awesome thing with Work Ready Wednesday. Work Wednesday. Yeah, it's, it's, career, it's a career Wednesday where we bring uh, businesses into our school and we set them up here in the lunch right there for a couple hours during our lunch period and it gives you interact with the students. It's been really successful and kids have really loved it. And they just get to ask questions directly from you about your industry and how to get into it. So uh, I, this is my first year doing this. I always forget to bring cards. But uh, before you leave, if you want my information, let me know. It's just Smyrna High School right over here. You throw a rock in their building. It's just right over there. So uh, if you want to set that up during lunch, let me know. And then uh, I'll have a career fair next fall that I'll be organizing that way. Yeah, or if you don't get his contact information, Welcome to reach out to me and I'll get you in contact with them. So. Call Rutherford or call Smart High School. Yeah. There you go. Career coach, Smart High School. Um, okay, so like my, Mike said, my name is Tiffany Phillips and I have been in Rutherford County Schools for, um, goodness, 18 years now. This is my 18th year. I, well, no, but I've had 16 years in CTE education. So I was in the classroom for 16 years. Um, I taught six years at Ingleville School and ten years at Riverdale High School. So I've had two extremes um, from small, very small, intimate country school where I taught grades six through twelve, and um, all the way up to the comprehensive high school where um, I taught nine through twelve. There, I'm currently serving as the work-based learning facilitator for Rutherford County Schools. That's a huge mouthful. What that really means is um, I work with employers to help connect you with the right people within the school system. So I can connect you with any of our programs in the schools, within the teachers, um, as well as our career coaches within the schools. Um, but obviously I wear lots of hats, and so um, I, I help in CTE and other areas as well. So first of all, um, where does work-based learning? Work-based learning is a, let's look at the national level first, there's a huge push across the nation um, for work-based learning. And to be honest, Tennessee is a little bit on the back end of that. Okay, So um, while we have made great strides in work-based learning the last several years, there are lots of states who are where we are right now and have been for a lot longer time than we have. Um, but now it is a greater push across the nation. Um, we are seeing a lot more um, push to do apprenticeships. So whether that be a pre-apprenticeship program or an apprenticeship program with uh, a youth apprenticeship program that's ages 16 to 21-ish um, or an adult apprenticeship program, um, there's a huge push across the nation for those to uh, gain some steam. We've seen that over the last couple of years here in Rutherford County, I mean in, in Tennessee in general. Um, so work-based learning basically is any type of activity in a classroom or outside of a classroom that a student is engaged in that connects them with industry 
and it connects them with actual work skills. So this might be all the way on this left side of industry awareness. So what are the career clusters? What are the 16 career clusters that we recognize in Tennessee, um, the state of Tennessee? What are jobs that go under those industries? Okay? And what are some things that I could do within my industry? And then we move to career awareness, exploration. So all of these are exploration pieces. I'm very excited to announce that um, this past summer, the state of Tennessee added three new career exploration courses for middle school. So we um, are going to, we had a couple of schools this past, or this school year to implement those courses. Um, I wrote a grant last month and um, we received that grant to be able to expand those programs within Rutherford County Schools for next school year. So we're super excited about that um, to where our middle school students can begin thinking about what is industry? What might I want to be involved in as an adult? Because quite frankly, our main goal in education is to produce effective citizens who are contributing to society and our community, right? So if we think about that goal, um, we want them to go ahead and start thinking about in earlier years, what areas might I want to be interested in. Um, then we move over to career preparation, and um, these move over into our high school courses. The other pieces are in our high school courses as well, but career preparation is more in our high school uh, courses through our CTE programs, our programs of study. Um, we have all 16 career clusters in Rutherford County Schools, um, and we have over 40 programs of studies within Rutherford County Schools. So we hit each one of you guys somewhere, if not at multiple schools throughout the county. Um, and then we go over into career training. So this could be guest speakers coming in and actually leading um, demonstrations within the classroom, students going into industry to do internships, all the way into actual work-based learning career practicum, where our students leave campus and they go and work within industry as an employee in your facilities um, on a daily basis or whatever schedule you guys uh, put up. Next slide. Okay, so career training in Rutherford County Schools, we have four main groups of courses. The first one is the Work-Based Learning Career Practicum. That's where students are able to leave school early to go into the workplace. That looks different from school to school depending on the schedule that we're run they're running. Um, so many of our employers that we work with choose to work with one or two schools who have a similar schedule. Um, I will say though there is a gradual push from year to year to get closer to where we're all on the same schedule and that will help us out greatly. Um, we have work by starting transitions. These are with our students who need someone with them in the work environment. So uh, it's generally small groups, three to four students, and there is an adult school employee with them while they're on the work site. They are not always paid. Sometimes they are. It depends on what level of the program you guys are working with. Um, work based learning transitions actually falls under our SPED category, our special education category. So we have someone else who is in charge of that program. If you guys are interested in working with our um, SPED students in the transitions course, um, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to connect you with that person to get you going. We have clinical internships or nursing education. These are for our health science students. Um, really excited about what we're doing. I'll talk about this in just a second, but I'm really excited about what we're doing in these classes. Um, and then we have our practicum courses. So most of our programs of study have a fourth level practicum course, and it is kind of a combination between the career practicum where they go to work um, and then actual having opportunities within the classroom. <coughs> so for example, um, today we have a virtual trade fair. Uh, I'm sorry, virtual, um, our virtual education courses are having a enterprise. I said that wrong. Joy, correct me. Um, virtual enterprise trade fair uh, today where our students are actually putting together a booth and marketing and selling items 
um, here, right here in Rutherford County School. So our teachers have planned that for um, enterprises groups that across the Middle Tennessee area that have come here in Rutherford County and uh, to set up their booths and have that trade fair. Okay, this is the huge elephant in the room. Most employers say, but we can only work with 18 plus. So we can't do career practicum because we cannot allow uh, people who are not 18 into our businesses. So Tennessee state law fo follows our federal <coughs> child labor law, okay? Um, whenever you have a federal law, state law can mirror that law or it can be more strict, but it can never be less strict. So our Tennessee state law is going to, you're gonna be okay nationally with the federal law, in other words, okay? If you're following state law. So TCA 50-5-107, and that's the exempt minor section, says that students who are enrolled in a course of study and training in a cooperative vocational training program are exempt from TCA 50-5-106, which says that students, people who are under 18, do not work in certain uh, uh, positions. So they can't uh, operate meat cutters. They can't operate saws. Um, they're not going to be in a, a manufacturing environment. Because we have 50-5-107, if a student is enrolled in our work-based learning career practicum course, which is a vocational training program, then they are exempt from that child labor law. Um, we have a Middle Tennessee Regional Labor Standards Specialist he is with our Tennessee Department of Labor who can come in and explain this. He can um, look at your work environment and either approve or say, no, we cannot have minors in this area, whether they're in work-based learning or not. And I put his contact information up there for you guys. Um, I have held this meeting with several employers, um, with Nissan, with um, Old Time Pottery Distribution Center. And um, they have actually approved all of those jobs um, that we've held that with specifically. Oh, and WWE Solutions. Um, so these are new programs that we have created in the last year for our career practicum course. And we have students who are under 18 years old working in all four of these facilities that usually would have been exempt because of child labor law. But because they are in that career practicum course, they are legally able to perform that, that job. Um, Nissan North America, I'm very excited. They have uh, 15 virtual school students who are beginning work on the floor this month. So they've gone through their training. We have a couple, uh, a small group or two that is finishing up training, but they're going to actually be working on the floor um, at Nissan across the road. And they are under 18, many of them are. Um, WW Solutions, they are a distributor for Nissan North America. Last spring, they were one of our very first programs that started uh, under the child labor exemption law here in Rutherford County. Um, they started with four Smyrna High School students. They had such a great time and they enjoyed the program so much, they expected it to 10 this fall. They have done some awesome work. Um, Anthony Minor has gone out and spoke to lots of different groups. So if you want an employer friend to talk to, I'm happy to connect you with Anthony Meyer, Minor at WW Solutions to see what he's done and how he's done it. Um, Ascension St. Thomas Hospital, this fall, they started with eight high school students. They are working at the hospital in clinical roles. So the difference is they could have hired eight, under 18 beforehand, okay, um, to work at the desk or, or file paperwork, but they are working in clinical roles, taking blood pressures, temperatures, transporting students, uh, patients, um, anything that they are able to do with their license at the time, okay? And then last, we have TWB Company. Um, they are a, they create components for Nissan North America and they have one student creek student that is working on the floor that started this fall up in Antioch. So if they can do it, you guys can do it too. Here's my contact information. 
Um, I'm happy to sit down and talk with you about your situation because they're all different. If you just want to get in the classrooms, I can help you with that. If you want to come in and do demonstrations, I can help connect you with those uh, people. If you want to get with Mike, you can help with that. We have um, career coaches in three other high schools as well. Um, if you want to create a work-based learning program, I can help you with that as well. So, thank you. Okay, next uh, speaker is Dr. Jeff Sisk. Serves as the executive director for the Center of Workforce Development at the Tennessee Board of Regents. So I'll let him take it from there, and I think the next slide. Okay, if I do my own slide. Chat. Absolutely. Well, I'm just kind of a <coughs> control freak. Oh, I am. I, that's what my first wife used to say. So. I'm still married to my first wife. She hates it when I say that. So. <laughs> hey, good morning, y'all. Well, first of all, welcome to the Smyrna campus. Academy Murphy's Borough. This is uh, a lovely facility that opened in January 2017. We're very proud of it. Uh, my name is Jeff Sisk. I'm the interim president here at TCAT Murphy's Borough. I've been in the TCAT sector for about one, 27 years now. So I started about 12 years old. And the uh, uh, last 18 years or so, I've been a TCAT president primarily in West Tennessee, Jackson, Whiteville, uh, and some other stops along the way. My primary job is I'm at the Tennessee Board of Regents as the Executive Director for the Center for Workforce Development, which is a long title, but what I do is provide support to folks like Dr. Ridge at the community colleges and others at the technical colleges as to do a lot of non-credit workforce training and all to make sure that they have everything they need to do to serve business and industry in their service delivery areas. That's my primary need. Um, and so as of January 3rd, I'll have a new president coming in. I'll go back to the board office and then I think the chancellor yesterday told me uh, I'll be at the Memphis TCAP beginning in March. I live in Jackson, so that's okay. It's a little closer yes, to home. So, um, glad, I'm glad I was invited to be here. I'd like to welcome you guys here. Let's talk about the TCAPs in particular. So in the state of Tennessee, there are two systems of public higher education. One's the University of Tennessee system, so Knoxville, Martin, Chattanooga. Uh, they got the medical school in Memphis. They got UT Southern down in Pulaski. Um, and the other system of public higher education is the Tennessee Board of Regents. But we also have what we call six LGIs, locally governed institutions, in Tennessee State, Tennessee State, Tennessee Tech, East Tennessee State, and Austin P. So those are the six university nuts. Um, those are the six public universities in the state of Tennessee that are locally governed. But the Tennessee Board of Regents, um, 13 community colleges, 26 colleges of applied technology within the system. Board of Regents as a whole, my boss is Chancellor Ford, Clyde and Stone Tidings. We have over 110,000 students, four credit students, within the Board of Regents system. The TCAS themselves, there are original design, there's nine in each grand division of the state. The original, most of us were built in the mid 60s, uh, and the intent of the design was to have a campus within like a 30 minute drive time of every resident of the state of Tennessee. So, um, been in national traffic like I have lately, but that doesn't always work. But that's kind of the original intent. There's, we have a physical presence in last count, 93 of the 95 counties in the state of Tennessee. You're going to find a physical campus presence of a TBR institution. So we have a wide range there. Particularly about uh, TCAP Murfreesboro, uh, our mission of workforce development and student success. Very student centered and focused. On industries needs, okay? Student success and workforce development. Um, our goal is to help students, prospect students when they come in, to find the intersection between their passion and their purpose. Right? You've all, you're all HR folks. You dealt with people who are there, and it's just a job for them. They hate their job. They're just there. It's, it, it's, it's a vocation, it's just a way to put rent on the table sometimes. And those, those miserable employees, other employees in this world, it's just really hard. But fit matters, right? In the workplace culture, in your place, in our colleges, it, it matters. So if we can help them find the intersection between passion and purpose, or the intersection between the ability and uh, their aptitudes, that's what we try to do. So if a kid walks in the door, doesn't have a clue what they want to do, we've got several resources. Um, and I, 
I think so. I mean, I think I asked about years ago, right, and helped find that aptitude in, in my attitude, what I could actually do in the Army. We have things um, in our system, both the community colleges and the technical college, like the career scope, that could come in and just help them find that direction. There's a lot of great resources in the K 12 sector as well, you know, to just kind of find that path and to plot that path. Particularly about TCAT Murfreesboro, here's, here's a stat for you. The average age of a TCAT student at Murfreesboro, Jackson, Memphis, or wherever, is about 25 years old. A little older than you would think, right? You don't get many kids graduating out of high school, although it's getting better with the advent of the Tennessee province and other scholarships like that. But you know, a garden variety TCAT student is not too dissimilar from me, my original post secondary experience. I graduated high school in you know, 1980 something and went off to the local university, and as I tell people, I made the dean's list at the end of my freshman year of college, but it was a list of students that the dean had to kick out of school, because I just didn't go to class, I didn't understand what I wanted to do, I, I hadn't found that passion and purpose and stuff, so we, we deal with kids like that all the time, both uh, technical colleges, community colleges, and universities, right? Um, so they'll go to work, and then they'll finally figure out, hey, if I'm gonna make decent money, and I have a skill that someone's willing to pay for. And then they'll come back to school, be it community college, technical college, or university. So that's a, kind of a typical experience. We're, we have strategies to help address that. Uh, strategic, strategic enrollment management, dual enrollment strategies, um, dual credit opportunities within the high schools and things, kind of early post-secondary opportunities, EPSOs, that's, a, that's an acronym you might hear. We're all focused on EPSOs, getting those kids on college credits while they're still in high school. Because the literature shows if they can earn those credits in high school, they're more than likely will persist on to, or matriculate on to a post-secondary institution and then towards graduation. Um, at Murfreesboro, we have 17 different programs across a wide variety of fields. Allied health, manufacturing, construction, transportation. We have a very unique instructional delivery model at a TCAT. This is the same way all across the street. So our machine tool students, or our welding students, for example, they don't take English and algebra and biology and literature and art. Uh, there's something wrong with those types of classes, my boys, our teacher, right? But it's not necessarily going to be a good welder or machinist. We focus a bit more, or a lot more, on training and less on education. There's a difference between training and education. And I read it years ago, forgot who I can attribute it to, but training is mastering someone else's words, and education is mastering your own. So what's more important? It depends on the context in which you're working. Okay, so if I'm, a, if I'm a passenger in an aircraft that's, that's beginning to have mechanical issues, I would rather have a well-trained pilot trying to land that bad boy than a well-educated aeronautical engineer. So context matters. It depends on what you're looking for as well as employers. So um, it's a competency-based approach when we contact our setting. Now, if you were to go to our machine tour or welding instructor, hey, Dr. Edie is here, Dr. Eshel Edie is our VP of Instruction and Institutional Faculty in Sierra Murfreesboro. But if you were to go talk to one of her faculty members on this campus of the Murfreesboro campus um, and ask them to tell you about Kolb's experiential learning theory, they're not going to have a clue what you're saying, but they do it every day. Okay, so our students are going to see it, they're going to hear it, they're going to do it, they're going to reflect on it, they're going to experience it, they're going to engage in all their senses into the learning experience. Cole defines learning as the transformation of experience into knowledge. A lot of hands-on in every program that we have. It's, it's not just theory, it's practical application of the theory that they learn. Okay. Um, How do we do that? Well, part of the doing an aspect of it, particularly in the allied health clinical rotations. So we have a very successful practical nursing program. We train LPNs, right? They're PNs until they take the licensure exam. And literally across the state of Tennessee, we've had thousands of LPNs who have become RNs with bridge programs to the community college RN programs. But our PN students, our LPN students, it's a 1,296-hour training program. It's basically an 18 month program that we're cranking into 10 months. Um, and they'll spend over 800 hours in a clinical setting. They're giving real shots, drawing real blood, doing 
real things with real patients in the clinical setting. It's the best way to learn to be a nurse is to do nursing skills with real people. We can simulate a lot of things with mannequins and things, but that's the best way to learn. Because a patient will give you feedback immediately if you do something wrong. <laughs> Cooperative learning opportunities. I call it work-based learning, same thing. Um, so all of our non-LI health programs will do some co-ops or work-based learning opportunities. It's uh, depending on what the program is and how the instructor defines how far they want a student to progress in the program before they take a co-op opportunity. Okay? The co-op has to be directly related to what they're training for. So if you've got a machinist student, um, who's starting to get into CNC programming? If we can afford the student work based learning opportunity at an advanced manufacturing location where they can program PLCs and work on, or uh, CNCs and work on real machines for real money, we would much rather have them do that than to do it in the labs all day long. So, uh, and again, Dr. Eden can help you with that if you're interested in work based learning opportunities for your students. Uh, customized curricula for industry needs on the workforce side of what we do. Um, if you've got some continuing education requirements uh, for some of your skilled labor that you're looking for. And the reality is in manufacturing, there's no such thing as unskilled labor. If you're either skilled or you're super skilled, technology evolves. You've got new CNC equipment that you're doing, new PLCs, or, or new ways of different things. It could be lean manufacturing or safety training, whatever. Technology evolves, and the skill set you need for your employees evolve as well. That's where the technical colleges or the community colleges, workforce offices can come in, help design a training program. And Joy will probably talk about this in a minute as well um, to help you meet that particular need. And finally, apprenticeships. The growth area for the TCAT sector right now is in two areas: work-based learning. I'm sorry, uh, dual enrollment and apprenticeships. Okay. These are formalized. Department of Labor or State of Tennessee approved apprenticeship programs. They combine classroom instruction with on-the-job training. Um, right now, there's four different apprenticeship programs training to 40 apprentices per year is what TCAP workers world works through. You think about your workforce at your location right now. Just about every one of you can think about somebody who's out on the floor right now who has a great work ethic, has potential, but they haven't had the opportunity but they need another opportunity, something like that would be a second opportunity. So um, the best way to do that is to implement an apprenticeship program. That pull that person off the floor. If you're looking for maintenance technicians, if you're just like industrial maintenance techs, you got a production person out on your floor right now who's got great work ethic, great attendance, has that potential, let's put them in a, uh, an apprenticeship program where they're doing their related technical instruction at the TCAP or the community college. They're working in their shop under the supervision of a, a German maintenance tech. And then let's train up your next generation. It, it, sometimes it's easier to grow your own than to hire somebody to come to the right side. Um, a couple other notes here. You can't simulate. Think about you know the industrial revolutions, right? We're, we're, Go back and look. We're in Industry 4.0. We're in this new era. Uh, you know, in Industry 3.0 was process automation, robots, and things like that. So, back in February, um, I had the opportunity to go visit Dearborn, Michigan's Ford plant, where they're making the F-150 light, a battery-powered pickup truck for Ford. We're building a, a TCAT campus next to where they're building a new plant. Tennessee. So I, I got to go up there and take a look around. The technology is amazing. They don't have robots, they have cobots. Cobots, the robots are moving and working alongside the human operators. The technology is amazing. The, uh, um, there's a, these are not internal combustion engine vehicles that they're building on. It's all uh, battery powered. It's a lot of wires and things. So if you ever so when you're connecting wires, some connectors for wires, we, we make that connection. What's the first thing that we do to ensure the connection is secure? We kind of pull back on it, right? Well, that causes wire stress, and Ford doesn't want their folks doing that. So they have wearable technology for their production associates. So they make that connection, you click. The wearable technology hears the click. It gives you the green light that you have the full connection. 
so production operators not pulling it apart just to see. So this is the new stuff that's coming down the line. So if you're not there yet in your industry, we'll be eventually. So we use apprenticeship opportunities to train our students in this real world environment. TCATs and community colleges, I don't know about universities, we can't always afford the technology. I saw a 3D printer that was as big as this one building. It's additive manufacturing. Right? You know what additive manufacturing? We, we've been doing for years subtractive manufacturing. Take a block of metal, cut away, make a part. Now we're doing 3D printing, additive manufacturing. Printing that tool out from nothing. An $8 million 3D printer printing in that. I can't buy that for a TCAT. I'm not sure about community college. It's a little game that was pretty rich. But, um, so it's better for our students and better for you as employers to have a membership program as well as see the real world stuff. And it helps everybody. That's what we want to All right, I talked way too much. One of the best ways to connect with our students are job fairs. In fact, we're having one today. I like that. So when you get out at 12, you can run over to the uh, Murfreesboro campus and talk to some of our students. Um, looking for some of that skilled labor. Uh, there's a QR code here as well if you want to uh, check that out. Actually, it's Smart Campus after lunch. I'm sorry, they're at Murfreesboro this morning. So, so some of those particular programs. Um, I guess what we'll do at the end of this, uh, we'll have an opportunity to ask some questions uh, and, and get some answers and things. But I just wanted to reiterate, reiterate student success and workforce development. That's our focus here at Ticket Murfreesboro. Joy Rich serves as the Assistant Vice President of Workforce Development at Montlow State Community College. Quick time. How are we on time? Yeah, we're a little short. Uh, we're at uh, 12 minutes. So 12 minutes for me and NTSU. Okay, so that means I'm going to kick in to speak. Thanks, guys. Uh, so I am Dr. Joy Rich. I'm the ADP of Workforce Development. Totally love you. I can talk fast. My goal today is to show you how to connect with our Montlow students and how to connect with the workforce people that we are training in our area. You can put graphics on the chair for So I'm all about my acronyms. So we use the word power uh, to summarize our focus. So we use platforms to improve performance. I'm going to mention those to you. We provide opportunities for student engagement where we want our employers uh, participating with us on that. We have a variety of workforce training and certificates. We also have some really unique emerging technologies that can facilitate training uh, in ways that we have not known in the past. And then we have a variety of resources. So we'll click through these. So in Rutherford County Schools, all students in eighth grade take what's called a youth science aptitude assessment. But we recognize that we get students at Motlow who weren't in eighth grade in Rutherford County Schools. And so a lot of people come to us saying, I'm not quite sure what I want to do. My mom said I should do this, but that's just what my mom does kind of thing. So we have purchased an unlimited site license for you science. It is open to anybody in this room, anybody you know, anybody you know that knows somebody who wants to figure out what they are naturally wired to be. It's called you science. It's a series of brain games. It is phenomenal. And it will point you in the right direction of what careers you have the natural wiring to be successful in. So that's step one for our students. Second is handshake. If you're an employer in this room and you are not on handshake, Make sure you get in touch with me because Handshake is our platform that all Motlow students have access to and that's how we post job openings, that's how we post apprenticeship opportunities. When they're searching for job opportunities, that's like they're in deep. So if you're not on Handshake, we gotta get you on Handshake. That is uh, number one. And then the third piece that we do with our students is a platform called Big Interview. Because it's one thing to go through an education program to learn how to be a mechatronics technician. But if I don't know how to get through that interview and communicate with you how amazing I am, you're never going to hire me. So that is a third component in looking at that student package, is how do we prepare them for interviews. Once again, this is a platform that we've purchased unlimited licenses. I'm happy to share with anybody in this room. If you have children that you would like to not keep living in your house and get them out the door, let me know. I can set you up uh, with those things. So that's the platforms that we use. 
Another thing that's very unique about Motlow is our SkillsUSA program. If you're not familiar with SkillsUSA, this is an international career and technical student organization. Students can start as early as middle school, go through high school, and come on to us at college, and they compete in over 100 different competitions. So everything from automotive to nursing to barbering to how to give a presentation. We treat it as a sport at Mama. We have coaches, we have teams, we have practice, we have a state officer that's on our uh, chapter officer team. We are killing it in the world of Skills USA. So if you want to recruit, we click on the best of the best, click one more time. You want to get involved with Skills USA, both at the local level, so Motlo has Skills USA. Guess what? TCAT has Skills USA, and MTSU just launched a Skills USA chapter this term with our former president, who is actually the Tennessee State Skills USA president. So we all have Skills USA going. And, what does, and obviously, we're high schools. What does that look like? So these are the students who are going above and beyond, right? They're not just here checking a box, they want to have that networking opportunity, they want to, to be with employers. So this is a chance for you to come in, to help students prepare, to be a mock judge, to do all of those kinds of things and see our students locally, but also at the state or the national level. You can go, you can set up recruitment booths, you can be a judge at a competition. That's what we're looking for. So if competition and seeing the best of the best is something you're interested in, let me know, I will plug you in. That was just some of our pictures from last year where we dominated competition. Workforce certificates, a few I just going to mention. Google IT, we actually were given by Google 250,000 free licenses for all the Google IT training. It's eight courses, it basically is the equivalent of an IT degree. No joke. Our cybersecurity instructor is in charge of it. We have students all across the country taking this. We've just gotten into our jail system, Rutherford County Jails. Um, but Google IT is something, once again, free to anybody in this room, anybody you know. You got that kid in the basement playing video games, you want to get them a good job? <laughs> Google IT is where it's at. If they are within a certain geographic area, they also can get paid $15 an hour to get Google IT training. So if they're a Rutherford County individual between the ages of 16 and 24, they can get paid $15 an hour to get this free training that will lead them to an excellent job. So we just have some cool things like that going on. We'll go ahead and click ahead because I want to give MTSU at least five minutes to talk. <laughs> go ahead and click again. Uh, emerging technology, we have some really unique things at Motlow with Metaversity, um, virtual reality training. I am currently, as we speak right now, when I leave here, heading back to Shelbyville. We have built an aviation simulation lab that will rock your socks. We have FAA approved Redbird flight simulator. So if you know anybody who's ever thought about being a pilot, let me know because we're having our ribbon cutting next week and you get into the simulator and it's like you're really flying a plane. It's moving, it's shaking, it's doing all the things. But we're partnering with the Shelbyville Flight Academy for students to get their pilot training. Because as you heard earlier, no longer do you have to have a four year degree to be a pilot. And let me tell you, they're making more money than most of us in this room being pilots. So that's another unique thing that we've got going on. Click for me. We're always hosting resume writing workshops, career fairs, different kinds of training. Go ahead and click. That's just an example. Oh, lunch and learn. Go ahead and One of the cool things we do is a lunch and learn. So if your company ever wants to come in and bring lunch and have all kinds of students and Motlow faculty hear all about the wonderful things that you do, we welcome you to bring us lunch and have that conversation. And students love to come and let you feed them a sandwich while you talk to them all about your company and services that you provide. Um, we're always looking to connect with employers and get you on our campuses. And this is just an example of one of those things. We just hosted a huge expo event with 600 Rutherford County students and we brought in 20 different first responder agencies and hosted this massive event uh, with the National Guard. And these are the kind of things we like to do, like a big bang for your buck. Bring all the students there, bring all the employers there, provide them training while they're there, expose them to potential opportunities, and have everybody leaving excited about their future. That did fast enough? Did I give them five minutes? Okay, all right. Um, my information is just J Rich, J R S E H, at mscc.edu. I'll put that into the presentation for the next one. Our last uh, speaker is Tim Shope, serves as the Assistant Director of Employer Relations at Middle Tennessee State University Career Developments. 
Yeah, so I'm the Assistant Director of Employee Relations in our Career Development Center. Uh, quickly to explain what we do, uh, we help our students prepare for their first career out of college or internships, anything they need preparation for. We help resume writing, interviews, anything you can think of. We'll help them out with. Um, quickly, just a snapshot of MTSU. We have uh, close to 20,000 students each semester, very large talent pool to pull from. Uh, our largest colleges are the College of Basic and Applied Sciences. Um, College of Behavioral and Health Sciences and the College of Business. Uh, next slide. And just to give you some examples about what are in those, like basic and applied sciences, we have all of our natural sciences, biology, chemistry, etc. cetera. Uh, data science, computer science, um, and you can take a look there at some of the programs that we have. <coughs> so how can you connect and recruit MTSU students for jobs and internships? Handshake, uh, we, we've already talked about that a little bit. I might go a little bit more in depth with it. Um, so we also use Handshake. Many colleges and universities across the country use Handshake now. So this is not just something that you're going to uh, sign up for and MTSU students are going to see. You're going to be able to get that in front of a lot of students who are looking for an entry level position uh, coming out of college. Uh, so yeah, we, we partner with a lot of employers. Next slide. Uh, we launched it at MTSU in spring 2020, which happened to be a great time to launch it because everybody was on their computer. Uh, we currently have 11,570 students and alumni with activated accounts. So our students and alumni are using it. So we think you should be too. Um, and go back for a second. Uh, we're currently connected with over 10,000 employers and uh, have over 10,000 active job postings on there. Uh, so not just ones that have expired, these are active current in our system. Uh, so career fairs and events, our biggest one of the year is our fall career fair. Uh, this is, uh, we, let's see, in 2022, had about 160 employers and close to 1,000 students who showed up. So that's a chance to interact with a lot of our students in person. Um, we've noticed in the past couple years our students are itching to get back to in-person type events and actually talk with people face to face. So they're showing up. Uh, you can see there some of the other opportunities we have. Uh, there are some smaller departmental career fairs that happen throughout the year. Engineering technology, nursing, uh, reporting industry, IT. Most of our departments are going to have something for their students uh, in some sort of career fair. Uh, next slide. Uh, I'm just not going to have this question. <laughs> 60 seconds. <laughs> I got a lot of questions about internships. If you have questions, ask me. I can help you out with creating an internship program at your company and what that looks like at other companies and, and what it means for our students. Not all MTSU students are required to have an internship. It could depend on their department or their program if it's required. Um, but if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, we have an experiential learning program that students can opt into as well, and that gives them a distinction at graduation if they complete a certain amount of hours doing um, a service project or doing an internship. Uh, so that's an opportunity for our students as well. Uh, there's a QR code for our office, which we probably don't have enough time to uh, for you to scan. Yeah, if you want to, do a quick. Yeah. All right, and then the next slide is just my contact information. If you have any questions about uh, MTSU, the Career Development Center, anything, uh, connect with me, contact me. I will not know the answers to every single question that you have about MTSU because it's a very large place, but I can probably connect you with the right person. Uh, I, I, can, I can do that at the least. So feel free to connect with me. I'm always happy to answer questions and help out with your recruiting needs. Thanks. Thank you very much. If no one has any questions, you have 15 minutes to take it with your next class, like right there. So, feel free to ask questions. If you have any questions, you can ask them now. I guess we're probably looking at a minute since it is closed. Anybody have anything you want to ask? Yeah, I guess I'll ask. What's the best way? Is it to email you or email me? Or like email chain to hear about the job fairs and things like yes. that? Okay. And be on handshake too. Handshake, yes. Lesson learned. <laughs> I think the next group is probably. What's that? I think the next group is way more. Yeah, they're all in the I guess we'll move.